Hi folks, welcome. So I wanted to give you a demo of a circuit simulator which is now available on the Lush Projects website. Um, this is, I guess it's an interesting si simulator because it runs in the browser and it's very interactive. Um, a lot of circuit simulators based on Spice, they're not kind of they don't really respond immediately. You have to you have to run the simulation after you've designed the circuit, uh, whereas this kind of shows you the interactive behaviour in real time. Uh, so I think it's a really excellent tool. Now I have to claim that it's not kind of originally mine. Uh, it's based on a Java application developed by Paul Falstead, but uh, he has given me permission to. Uh, do a port of it so that it runs in the in a modern browser without plugins, um, which uh, well I think is really great, but they're kind of unbiased. Anyway, if to go and get to it, go to lushprojects.com/circuitjs, or one word. I'll put that uh, in the comments, um, and you'll get a page that looks like this. Um, there's lots of text here, and I know nobody reads text these days, but actually it is worth a read um, because there's quite a lot of useful information there. Um, but I guess for those of you that want to sort of see something happening, uh, what I'm going to try and do in this video is give you a quick overview of some of the things it can do um, and talk you through some of the main aspects of how this application works. And for this video, we're going to focus on the built-in demo circuits. There's a large library of built-in circuits for the uh, for the application. So we're going to look at some of those and how you can manipulate them, uh, give you a feel for the app, how the application works, uh, and then maybe we'll do a second video where we look at how to enter your own circuits. Um, so you can run the application in this small frame inside the uh, front page. Um, but I think for a lot of things you probably want to run it in a full window, so there's a link here that will open that. So we're just going to jump in and go straight to the full window version. So here's our initial demo circuit, and those of you that, that know electronics will recognise we have a, a so-called LRC circuit, a resistor, uh, an inductor and a capacitor in a loop. Um, and we can charge these up through a battery and a resistor with a switch up here. So obviously this main panel in the middle shows a schematic diagram of the circuit uh, being simulated. Um, and you're probably wondering about the colours and the dots. Well, the colours indicate the voltage. So the green colour is a kind of positive voltage. Uh, the grey colour down here is... Oops, is a ground voltage and the red colour is a negative voltage. Um, you see this is kind of running out of steam now, I'll charge it up in a minute, uh, but just before we do that, the yellow dots here, they show the flow of current. Um, so the faster they're moving, the faster the current is flowing. And they show conventional current flow, so they go from positive to negative. You can, uh, in the options menu, flip it to show real current flow from negative to positive, but as we all use conventional current flow, I guess that's kind of the sensible default. Um, so I'm going to flip the switch here again. And what you'll see is uh, big current starting to flow through the inductor. Um, again, those that know electronics will recognise the inductor kind of resists the initial flow of current, so uh, uh, it builds up slowly. And if I open the switch again, the uh, the LRC circuit starts to resonate and you see the uh, current flowing backwards and forwards and slowly decaying as power is dissipated through the resistor. And you can see the, uh, the colours there showing you how the voltage is changing in the circuit while it's doing this. So you've doubtless noticed on the bottom of the screen that we have uh, some graphs and these are like little oscilloscopes showing you the uh, voltage and current across the different components uh, inside this circuit. And if I scroll the mouse over one of the oscilloscopes, you will see that the uh, component it's associated with turns blue. So this is the inductor, and then this one here is the capacitor, and this one here is the resistor. I'm just going to 
give that another kick. Um, on the graphs, we've currently got two colours. We've got yellow, which is showing you the current, and green, which is showing you the voltage. And you can see, I guess, a classic piece of uh, electronic theory here that uh, across the resistor, the voltage and the current are in phase. Um, whereas across the inductor and the capacitor, there is a phase difference between the voltage and the current. Um, if you just want to look at uh, one of these components, you can right click on the oscilloscopes and you get a pop up menu with quite a lot of different options on it. Um, but I'm going to just turn off the show current for now so you can just see the voltage. Um, and you'll notice that when you just show the voltage, you actually get uh, horizontal grid lines appear on the scope, which you don't get if you uh, show the two things together. Um, and you can change the um, you can change the settings here again. So currently it's showing the peak values in the corner, um, but I've just changed the settings to show the scale. So we're seeing this is 10 milliseconds per horizontal division and five volts per vertical division uh, on that scope at the minute. Right, we're going to flip this back to how it was, so that's showing the peak value, and that's going to show the current as well as the uh, as well as the voltage. Uh, we'll give that another flip and let it rescale itself. Um, the other thing you have on the sort of main panel here is information about the circuit um, that pops up in this corner. Um, so the default is showing you the time elapsed. So currently we've uh, simulated 2.25 seconds of this circuit running. Um, and it also sort of shows you other facts which you calculate. So it's calculated here the resonance frequency of this LRC loop is 41 hertz. So if I hover over a component, I'll go over this capacitor, then what you see is kind of real-time information about the critical uh, parameters of this component. So we can see the current through it, we can see the voltage across it, uh, we can see its capacitance, uh, excuse me, and we can see the power it's dissipating. And we can also get the same effect by hovering over the, um, hovering over the corresponding oscilloscope and seeing what's happening there. Um, so these are kind of the main features on this central panel which shows the schematic and the uh, simulation. Uh, obviously up the top we have a range of, uh, a range of menus. Um, most important probably for this demo is this circuits menu which has a long list of different circuits which are pre-built into the application that you can look at uh, which demonstrate all kinds of different uh, electronic ideas. We'll come and have a look at a couple of those in a minute. Um, there's a few options that you might want to play about with here. Um, if you're American you might prefer to have your resistors looking like zigzags so you can uh, you can turn off the European resistors and have uh, zigzag resistors instead. Um, I'm British, so I'm going to have European resistors. Um, yeah, you can have a look at the options. Uh, you might find stuff that's interesting there. Um, down the side, we have a range of controls, which oh, plus some advertising for Lush Projects, of course. But we have a range of controls for uh, different uh, aspects of the uh, simulation. Um, the top button here is a reset button. And that just kind of resets the circuit to a vaguely sensible state. Um, so if your circuit goes wrong for any reason, then uh, you can try clicking the reset button and hopefully the simulation will restart in some kind of vaguely sensible way. Um, you also next to that have this checkbox that says stopped. And I'll just set this going again. If you click that checkbox, then it stops the simulation and uh, freezes uh, the whole behavior there. Um, you might sometimes find that this checkbox uh, stops itself. Um, if the mathematics that drives the uh, simulation goes wrong for any reason, then the uh, program will uh, stop the simulation and display a message explaining why it's been stopped. And that will give you an opportunity to edit the circuit or uh, maybe just try clicking the reset button uh, and you might find the simulation works better a second time. 
Um, I, mean, I think it's worth kind of commenting at this point. To, you know, this is simulations of electronic circuits are not perfect, and, and I know circuits that work absolutely fine in practice that don't simulate correctly on this application. Um, similarly, I know circuits that you can simulate on this application that, that I'm absolutely sure will not work correctly in practice. Um, so, you know, don't take this as definitive, but uh, I think it's sort of helpful to look at this stuff as a visualization. Uh, but really, you know, use good design practice and uh, verify all results on real systems uh, if they're in any way, shape or form important. Um, we're going to set this going. One reason you might want to stop this is um, on some hardware, and particularly as the circuits get more complicated, it is quite resource intensive running this simulation in the browser. Uh, so by stopping the circuit, you free up a bit of resources, which makes it easier to go and edit the circuit, for example. Um, it's probably also kind of worth just to comment on, on you know, which what kind of hardware requirements we have and, and what kind of browser requirements we have. Um, it needs reasonably good hardware, but it doesn't need to be sort of the, the newest and the shiniest. Um, this is uh, running on a... Uh, core 2 quad so it's probably more than five years old the machine is running on um, and it's absolutely fine um, in terms of browsers you need a pretty modern browser um, I would recommend Chrome that seems to be the one that has the best combination of feature support and uh, speed of running it uh, Internet Explorer runs it pretty fast but lacks some of the features uh, required to save the files, which we'll look at uh, maybe in another video. Um, Firefox has all the feature support, but uh, is a little bit slower on the JavaScript, so it doesn't run the simulations quite as fast. Um, so for now, Chrome seems to be the best, but I'm sure that will change as the browsers leapfrog each other. Um, and it's just a real shame, actually, that, that Explorer, which is probably the fastest to run it, uh, doesn't quite have all the features in at the minute. Let's kick this guy off again. Um, I'll show you the last couple of controls down here. Um, so the simulation speed does pretty much what you'd expect. It changes how rapidly it attempts to simulate. So uh, if I move this up, you'll see that things start to go a bit faster. Uh, and if I move it down, of course, they go a bit slower. Now, as you would expect, this is all kind of limited by the CPU power in your machine. So, you know, you can't sort of turn it up forever and expect it to get faster and faster and faster on every machine. Um, these sliders, by the way, you can also change them using the mouse wheel if you have a mouse wheel available. Um, and then the current speed slider here um, shows you uh, or changes how fast the dots move for a particular current. So if I scroll that down, you'll see that though the current through this loop is staying the same, the speed of the dots changes. Um, the last slider here is currently disabled. It's It shows you the power brightness. Uh, I will just uh, set that up so we can see it. So if I choose this show power option, what we're now seeing is the... Uh, colors are showing how much power is being dissipated by the components rather than the voltage. So this resistor down here is dissipating lots of power as it's the sort of main block in that loop. Um, as we turn this off, you'll see that the um, uh, inductor and the capacitor uh, start to dissipate power instead. Um, so you can use that option to change this power brightness slider and then that affects the sensitivity of that uh, power indication. So we'll go back to uh, go back to showing voltage. Um, so I think that gives you a bit of a flavour for the key controls. Uh, I just want to show you a couple of other circuits which have some additional controls. Um, so if I go to basics uh, potentiometer divider, then this circuit has a potentiometer or a variable resistor in it, um, and we can, if we have a variable resistor. Then we have an extra slider appear uh, on the side here for that and again we can move that on this slider and you can see the voltage at the uh, wiper of the variable resistor changes or we can use the mouse wheel uh, either over the slider uh, or put the cursor over the component itself and use the mouse wheel and you'll change the value of the potentiometer 
Uh, similarly, um, there is uh, having a look at, look at this demo. So this is an NPN transistor, and now we have two controls. These are variable voltages, so you can control the collector voltage and the base voltage uh, to see what the uh, transistor does. So again, you can scroll those by putting your mouse over the uh, over the slider uh, or over the voltage indication going in here. So you can't control all voltages. There's a sort of special component type for variable voltages of this type. Um, but if you have one of those in the demo, then you can do that. Um, a lot of the demos are analog electronics, which I think is probably the most interesting. Um, but there are some uh, lots of digital demos as well. So we'll just have a quick look uh, at a, a digital demo. Um, have a look at a 8-bit ripple counter. This is working pretty fast, we'll slow him down. Um, so as you can see, what we've got is a bunch of uh, JK flip-flops uh, being driven by a clock here. And you can see that uh, as, they, uh, as they clock through, you get a binary output count uh, coming out of the flip-flops. And the uh, uh, oscilloscopes down here are showing you uh, the binary pattern on all the different uh, digits. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, hopefully you found that useful. Um, next video we'll look a little bit at uh, what it takes to create your own uh, circuits. Uh, but in the meantime, have a play and explore through uh, some of the demos. There's some really interesting uh, fundamental electronics being shown there. And it's well worth having a look at them uh, and getting your head around what's going on. Thanks a lot.